All right, how's it going, guys? Uh, this is Mr. Zari here from Spring Branch uh, at Landrum Middle School, and today we're going to take a look at programming the LEGO Mindstorms EV3 robot using the color slash light sensor. Uh, before we do anything, I just want to remind you guys, make sure that you're always using your brain, thinking things through, okay? So I've got my robot connected to the computer, and I've already got a project open, and I've got a program open, both of which are blank. So the first thing that I want to do is go ahead and save uh, my project to reflect what it is that I'm doing here. So I'm going to go ahead and save this project as a color sensor. All right, so that's what it's going to show up as in my files uh, on my robot brick. And I'm just going to save that to the desktop right now. And we've changed that. Okay, so when it comes to the color or light sensor, <clears throat> it's kind of a finicky object. It's a finicky sensor. Uh, and really what you want to use it for is for sensing color, uh, sensing light, reflected light, and ambient light is sometimes a, a big problem because it depends on how much light is in the room, if there's sun shining through the windows, or if there's no sun shining through the windows. So all of those light factors which change, you know, minute by minute, will affect how you program your robot. So typically we are just going to spend most of our time just using it as a color sensor only. And whenever the color sensor recognizes a specific color, then it will perform some sort of action. So let's get started programming. We've got our start block already here. And what I'm going to just do just to demonstrate this, how this works, is I'm going to make my robot drive forward. And so I'm just going to leave it on. And I want it to go forward. And let's just leave it at half speed. I want to make sure that my ports are correct. I got port B and C, which is correct. That's where my large motors are plugged into. So to find the color sensor, we're going to go to the weight programming block. And I'm going to drag and drop that. And always the weight starts with a time uh, scenario. But I'm going to change that to the color sensor scenario. So once we get to the color sensor scenario, we have compare and change. And I'm just going to tell you right now, change, if you use change, what it is going to do is it's pretty much going to be collecting data for the color, or it's going to be allowing for a change in reflected light intensity and ambient light intensity. And these are probably not functions that we're going to use. So we're going to stick to the compare. I'm going to show you the color and then we're going to take a look at what the reflected light and ambient light looks like but we're not actually going to use them so i'm going to click compare and color and you can see that i only have one option here and that option happens to be a number and i happen to have a little red square there if i click on the number i've got a combination or a, a different selection of colors zero through seven we've got no color, black, blue, green, yellow, red, white, and brown. And let's just say that the color that you are trying to identify is a different color. And it is a color that can be made by combining some of these colors together. We could simply click on those and test and, and figure out, you know, what's a primary color, what's a secondary and tertiary color. If you're familiar with that kind of information, then you can do that. All right, but we're going to stick with red because I actually have a red folder that I'm going to use to stop my robot. So we're going to click red, all right, which is five. And I'm going to make sure that my port for the color sensor is three, and that is correct. So three is correct right here. And what I want my robot to do is whenever it sees red, I want it to stop. So I'm just going to click off, and I think my program is done. All right, because I just want it to drive forward till it sees red. When it sees red, I want it to stop. So I'm going to go ahead and change the name of my program to uh, Seeing Red, all right, which is actually means being angry. But let's go ahead and download this and let's see this thing in action. All right, guys, so we've got our robot and I programmed it to stop whenever it sees red, so I happen to have a red folder that works perfect for this. So what I'm going to do is tab over to my project folders, and I'm going to look for the color sensor folder. I'm going to open that up, and I see seeing red is the name of my program. I'm going to line this up, and my color sensor is right here. 
I'm going to set this down, point it towards the red folder, and let's see what happens whenever it runs into that red folder. And it stops. That's exactly what we programmed it to do. So that looks like we were successful. Okay, so we had some success there with uh, seeing red. And so let's just open up a new program and I just wanna take a look at what would happen if we looked at the other options, okay? So I'm not even gonna worry about making a complete program. I just wanna go back to uh, my weight programming block and I'm gonna look at color sensor and my other two options under the compare area is reflected light intensity and ambient light intensity. So if I click on reflected light intensity, what this is doing is this is telling me how much light is reflecting back into the light sensor. And so this gives us a situation where we have equal to, less than, not equal to, greater than, equal to, less, uh, and less than equal to, and greater than equal to. And we would set a limit as to how much light we want to reflect into the sensor. Now this situation is very tricky because it depends on did we turn the lights on in the room, is there sun shining through the window, things like that. But this is also another way to determine color because really we see color based on the reflection of the frequencies of light waves that are reflecting out of an object. Okay, So this is another way that we could do this with color. If we are choosing a color and it doesn't seem to work, we can try to use the sensor and look at the port view on our brick and figure out how much light is being reflected when we hover over a specific color and then it can work that way. All right. Uh, then we also have the ambient light intensity. Same situation, this just kind of reads how much light is in the room or that's being reflected into the color sensor. Of course, this is a very finicky issue as well because it's based on how much light is in the room, which varies minute by minute. Now, I don't want to actually program anything using these two options because they are very finicky. Uh, and I don't want to give you all the answers. I want you guys to figure it out for yourself. So I've kind of demonstrated how the color sensor can be used. There are many other ways that you can do things. You can even collect data using it. But this gives you a good starting point. So just want to remind you guys, whenever you're doing something, make sure you use your brain. Make sure you think things through. And always, always, always do the right thing. Okay? You guys have a good day. Take it easy.